Good morning. I, I, I thought I was safe, but uh, there I was minding my own business. Um, yesterday, and Caroline came up behind me and started to choke me. And, and I, I, you know, I thought I was warned. Um, first of all, I have to warn you, these are my disclosures. And as always, when I show you cases that are mine and I do them in an off-label way, uh, individual results will vary. Um, first, uh, Caroline said, il faut que nous parlons seulement en français, but I don't speak French. And, and I, I knew something was up. I knew I, I should worry. Uh, <laughs> who am I debating? But, but you know, and then when she, was, when she was choking me and I looked around, <laughs> she said something about flying monkeys. And, and I didn't fully understand that. And then she offered me an apple. So this, this could be a dangerous experience, and, and, and uh, you know, with some worry, I approach this. Well, if you look at the literature, successful surgery for PIP joints, in fact, means a 24-degree improvement and a 50% contracture reduction. And um, our aggressive Sicilian, Marie Badalamente, emphasized that yesterday. <laughs> The prognosis for improvement worsens with long-standing deformity, with severe deformity, and with combined disease and change in lifestyle. Corrections deteriorate over time with all treatments. All treatments. Residual disease, recurrent disease, joint deterioration, and reoperations become hell. Surgery was the only choice for correction. Open fasciotomy and fasciectomy can be painful and prolonged recovery, and it is clearly a longer recovery, with complications in up to half of cases according to the published literature. Some patients are worse than pre-op. Their hands are straighter, but they can't make a fist, they can't function. Talk to a retired uh, blue-collar worker who loves to play golf, who has Dupuytren's disease, you get his hands straight, and then he can't hold a golf club. You do not have a happy patient. Needle fasciotomies, less expensive, quick correction, quick recurrence, and less correction. And that's in published literature. Thank you, Paul. Uh, correction of secondary deformities. Um, recurrences, <coughs> excuse me, recurrences post-op, 30 degrees or more, 5% at 10 years, 70% at seven years, Sa same kind of treatment, recurrences post-needle, 85% at five years. And post-enzyme, I'm sorry, Joe, it's 46%. It's not 65. And 80% of our patients never had retreatment. Uh, residual and recurrent or new disease, skin and tendon scarring, capsular contracture, arthrofibrosis, joint degeneration with aging, another operation. I have to go through all that again. I have to have my palm laid open. What I'd like to consider instead are injections for primary correction, injections for recurrences, recurrences after surgery and after collagenase. Um, tell me how I play this video. Use my mouse. Show me how to use the mouse. Ah, that mouse. The mouse mouse. This young lady has a double cord in the finger and part of it is part of the radial cord is confluent with a more central cord in the palm. Um, my off-label comment is I've upped the volume and I'm going to get the cord in the finger by injecting away from the flexor tendon. Okay, you get the idea. You've seen it before. I didn't know what would be shown before. I'm not gonna show a lot of videos like that. You eject away from the flexor tendon. It's not terribly difficult. Here's a patient who comes to us with IP joint contractors, and that really will be my topic. Patients don't present often with isolated PIP joints. They present with combined contractures, PIP and DIP, MP and PIP, and you have to treat what comes. 22-year-old basketball player with a, a worse DIP than PIP contracture, 
Here's his correction. I won't, I'm not going to show you his injection. His finger is pale because I use epi in the uh, local. Um, here he is at four years. He still hyperextends. So we have a significant contracture of both IP joints to start and one that has remained durable. Uh, here's a patient who had a severe contracture, but he was too busy to wear a splint. I think splints are important in the first three months. My worst patients are those who didn't wear splints in the first three months, and that is entirely anecdotal. I have several, so they're, they're data. <laughs> he's still 50% better than he was, but he's not anywhere near as good as he could have been. Uh, four years post-surgery, not I didn't do the surgery, came to me, heard about enzyme, and said I am never going to do that again. Here he is after collagenase. So this is a combined mild MP but severe PIP contracture. You can get 90 degree contracture straight. Um, here's a patient who had, um, I think he's one of the McGrouthers. Uh, he had a, uh, a correction with, with uh, CCH, had a recurrence. I said we can do surgery, we can do repeat injection. I don't want surgery, try an injection. So here you see him on top, uh, before injection, after injection at one year, he came back. That was his recurrence. It's almost the same cord. We've left matrix, we've left cells, we leave both. We do radical surgery, we still leave both. We're not doing a cancer operation. We may be taking out cells, we're not taking out every cell. Come on, guys. And women. Carolyn, retreatment. So on the top left where we started, on the right where we went, and uh, where we were before the second treatment, and this is where he is now two years after second treatment. He will be back. This is what I call the McEnzyme method. We probably should call it the McHurst method. Um, this is a patient who had prior extensive radical surgery with skin grafting. Um, he comes to me with severe contracture. He has, I said, I think you'll have a skin tear. <laughs> so it's the open finger technique. That's what it looks like. That's what it progressed to. That's what it healed to. That's what he was like. At, uh, before he had his ring done, so I did the PIP, I got about 50% improvement, you see where it was. He had a severe boutonniere and we got him to zero. This is what he was like at the start on top and at the bottom at four years just before he passed away. So no more recurrences. Hopefully. <laughs> The beard and nails grow after death to, to cords. I don't know. Here's a patient who has had needle upon neurotomies twice in each hand. He came to me, he's 76, 77 at this time, and he said, all I want to do is hold my wife's hand. I've heard about, I've heard about the enzyme. I don't want to go to that far place down south again because they got me straight, that person got me straight, but I got a recurrence quickly, and even though that person did it again, um, it came right back. So he had to have um, collagenase in stages. Oh, oh yes, occasionally you do get bruising. Uh, that's the worst uh, armpit swelling and hematoma I've seen. Now if I do the mouse. I, I needed to get his ring finger out of the way so I could get to his little finger. This is before double dosing. Oh, let me see if I can get that to work. Pull on this and uh, see if we can get some correction. Are you hurting? No. Nope. You take a breath, okay. Ah, hold me. <laughs> That's my favorite video. So that's his ring finger correction, and about 60 days later, we did his PIP joint. And this is, um, this is when he returned to me. 
uh, he would not have his left hand done until we had double dose available. He said, I just don't want to go through that whole thing twice. And he was waiting. He goes, he goes south in the winter, as many northerners do. This is what his right hand is like at five years. Okay, if you would bend for me, sir. And we both know that's arthritic, but I know you can do better than that. Uh, uh, I can almost touch it. All right, and straighten out. No, he's, he's actually stiff at the... the Okay, don't believe it. That's all right. No, it's okay. You're not American. I don't have to listen. <laughs> I want to insult everybody. This is what his left hand was like. And I show him to you for a specific reason, which you'll see in a minute. But this is what his left hand was like. He had um, double dosing. Okay, a little skin tear in the middle. And this is the Look manipulation. That. Two days later, little correction with multiple little skin tears. The ring finger. You, how many years has it been this way? Four. Or no, this way ten. ten oh, years. that's longer. Than oh wait, that. remember when I was down to see that guy in Florida, that buddy of yours? <laughs> <laughs> see, he may be listening to this. Uh, oh, sorry. I can't remember his name now. Well, I, I'm not allowed to say his name, but his, his, initials, his initials are Charlie Eaton. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is what he looked like in two weeks. So, so this is a work in progress on that side. Uh, but there are multiple fingers involved. This is a severe deformity. Um, not something that one would necessarily use collagenase for until you've used collagenase for it. And in fact, it's, uh, it's safe and easy to, to use. Uh, what have I learned? Not to turn my back on Caroline. I've learned that adequate anesthesia both before injection and before manipulation is critical, that a patient repetitive pull is essential, and it's not just pulling one finger, it has been emphasized, it's massaging and pulling, that one must persist in getting the finger straight. You may not get it until you've really made a significant, substantial bang the table effort, especially with the thick cords. IP joint correction at both levels is very possible uh, with enzyme. The disease doesn't change. Recurrences are recurrences. The disease is still there and individual results will vary. I hope I've made that clear. Thank you. <laughs>